Beginning of a new job. The very, 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 very beginning. Doors open. Dun, 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 dun. This is what it looks like right now. Beautiful view. Absolutely amazing view. So they did have some landscaping done before, but they need a critical update. And let me show you something. As you see, not a lot of access, right? So I had to jerry-rig something. So cool thing about their house is this whole thing, this all this property is theirs, and down that way. So this is just a deer fence, but all this is theirs. So we're just gonna get the machines up and then I'm gonna stockpile all the dirt, all the sod, all the nasty stuff there. And then we'll be able to do our job. Pretty good. Bueno, bueno, bueno. As my former ancestors once said to me in the past life, I am Mexican by the way. In the past life I was Mexican. My cameraman is Mexican. Right, Coast? And Cuban. And Cuban. And I definitely can relate because I'm more cultured than him. I'm probably more cultured than you. Do you like burritos? I love burritos. I love burritos too. Do you, you like tacos? I love tacos. What kind of tacos? Carne asada. Ah, interesting. Anyway, let's get down to business. <laughs> Enough with the cultures. Okay, so this particular project was very fun. And last time I did a voiceover, you guys lit up the comments and you said, give us more lessons. And Coaster, being the best cameraman a coaster can be, he said, T, you should do a video teaching him things about this particular job. And I said, that's a great offer. I have an idea. For this particular one, this one took me quite a long time to close. And I wanna share with you some of the things I did to close this deal. Now, at the end of the job, this deal was 140 bands. And uh, <clears throat> I'll break down some numbers for you a little bit later. But this particular client was a Yelp inquiry. She hit me up on Yelp and she said, hey, I have a project. And I said, that's a great offer. Do you have a design? And she said, yes, yes, I do. And I said, awesome. Please send a design over. She sent it over and it was a design like this. Okay, Coaster will throw this up after the video is done and you guys will see the design. Now it is, it's nice, nicer to have this than not, but to be honest, it's a little underwhelming because me personally, I, I hate hand-drawn designs. And uh, if it's just all flat work, hand-drawn designs work fine. However, um, for this one, it needed to be a little bit more detailed and have a, uh, a three-dimensional drawing, two-dimensional drawing, whatever, the elevation drawings. We need an elevation drawing for sure. Now, uh, over here you see the boys, they are doing the putting green. One thing that I made a mistake on is, for some reason somewhere in, along the line, the homeowner said, oh, just leave, leave the, uh, the border where it is and just put a putting green in. And uh, I said, okay, but in retrospect, I should have took it all out and then re-leveled it and then put it back in because at the end we had a little bit of a hiccup with the levels. And I mean, we figured it out, it was fine, but it just took more time. It's always easier just to rip everything out and put it back. But here we're digging for the retaining wall. See back there? Now there is a complete drop off on this wall and uh, this one was quite tricky because it didn't have a proper drawing, elevation drawing. No engineering plans, right? And this wall was, it was in, in the drawing, the wall worked out to be like four and a half feet. But I told her, I'm like, I can't build this wall four and a half feet because I don't have any engineered plans for this. And uh, I said, I can only do three feet max. So just to protect my butt, we did the geo grid, we did everything but I told the boys to bury two blocks into the hill. So literally we built a five foot wall and uh, I buried two blocks because the worst thing is if I get a call back and said, hey, my hot tub pad that you built homeboy has slid along with the hot tub. And I would say, oh shit, that's a problem. 
so I'd have to come back and redo it. So I just did cheap insurance. I buried two blocks. Uh, we put all kinds of base rock in there, drain rock, pipes, everything. And uh, that wall is not going anywhere for sure. But it's always good to protect your butt because once you leave a job, you definitely don't want to come back, especially for something stupid like that. Now you see the excavator here has been playing a very huge role in the whole thing. And I've been telling Jose, I'm like, dude, you got to get good with the excavator. So I told him, I'm like, get on this thing and stay on this thing and just figure it out. So this job was the job where he figured out how to run the excavator correctly. And on the next job we went to, man, he was a digging machine. He was a digging machine. It's really important to have your people know how to run your equipment correctly. Also, I want to tell you this. If you're watching this video and you're like, T, I want to do jobs like this. Or if you're a stonemason, if you know how to do retaining walls, pavers, and you're watching this and you want to work at a company where you get paid very well and you have very, very high growth opportunities where you could be making a ton of money as long as you take on responsibility, I am hiring. I would love to hire you. I'm looking for stonemasons. I'm looking for people that do retaining walls, pavers, uh, level work, site work, grading. That's what I want. I do not want people that are just laborers. Okay, I want skilled masons. I'm looking for masons particularly. So if you are a mason and you want to get paid very well, starting at 30 bucks, but I mean we can go to like $50. It doesn't, I don't, it doesn't even matter. It just depends on how, how skilled you are, how responsible you are, and how much you want to put on your plate. But the 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 like there's no cap no limit okay and it's a great company to work at you'd be hanging out with me you'd be hanging out with jose and uh you get to run cool equipment all right moving on now next thing i want to say is if you like jobs like this and you want to learn about more jobs like this reach out to me join go king that's what it's for 620 people in there right now and uh we are growing at a very fast rate, just like Applewood. That's what I want to be. I want to grow fast, strong, and steady. But for this, okay, let's go back to the job where I promised to teach you how I closed this deal with this particular client. Her name was Eileen. She was awesome. One of my favorite clients. Super easy to work with. Uh, I'm be honest, her neighbors were not the best. They were We'll just leave it at that. Not the best, right? <laughs> but there were there were some things that happened that just kind of made this job more of a pain in the butt than it was. But dealing with her and her husband, it was a dream. Nothing wrong. Everything was super relaxed, super cool. She took ideas and uh, she took suggestions. Okay, see right there? See the guys? They're literally waist deep because they're burying two blocks. So we dug very deep and then... We put in uh, a lot of base rock, drain rock, and then we put blocks in. So that wall is not going anywhere. I made sure to build that wall so well. I cannot emphasize how important it is to build walls correctly so you don't have to come back later on in the future and deal with a nightmare. Okay, that wall probably cost me an extra maybe 1500 bucks to build like I did, but it would have cost me another 20 grand to come back and fix a mistake that we made and uh, I can charge her for more blocks now but I can't charge her to put in more blocks when the wall fails I have to come fix that for free okay how did I close Eileen now she reached out to me from Yelp and she said I have a job and I said great send over the design she did the design was okay it was it was uh like I said, I don't really like hand-drawn designs, but it worked. It was, it specified everything and we got the deal done. So I bid on the job, it was around 100,000. And then I, um, and then she came back with some notes and then I sent another bid and this was closer to 200 grand because she added on a bottom of the hill portion. And then I sent it over and she said, ah, too much like we can't do it right now look look at this see the wall pay attention to the wall look how big that boy is literally maybe six blocks deep and then we filled the whole thing with base rock there's the pipe okay very beautiful and 
there it goes now they're starting to level it out and then we put and then here comes the base so this was very tricky by the way a little little V type of wall and it's kind of a it's a cool feature it kind of falls off the cliff pretty much that's how it is because <clears throat> when you put the hot tub there it seems like you have a f just a hot tub floating in midair which is pretty sick oh Puma there's Puma <laughs> Puma's a gangster <clears throat> anyway so we did that and then I sent it we sent it over back and forth and then we agreed on a number it was like 110 10 grand and uh, I kept following up because I wanted this job it was gonna be a very simple job we had great access in the backyard and uh, she was just super cool to work with and you always got to feel out the customer if they are uh, easy to work with easy to talk to they respond to you right away they're not in a pain in the ass then that's an ideal customer but if someone is making like extravagant claims about stupid things you know like oh this is not done oh this is too much like if they're complaining about price or if they're complaining about um, is anything to do with cost you know then most of the time it's gonna be a difficult customer and it would be in your best interest to pass especially when you're in a position where you can pass on a customer in the beginning when I started I was not able to pass on people I would just take everything I got and I uh, learned my lesson the hard way but it got it got me to where I am today but in this particular case I was already at a point where if a customer is not vibing with me then I don't really have to take that job I just I just pass on them and say oh we're too busy can't take it but in her case she's very nice so we went back and forth and uh, got to a point where I just kept following up like first time second time third time fourth time and she just wasn't closing you know she wasn't closing and I told her I'm like hey what can I do to make this deal close like you just got to be straight up with them what can I do to close this deal anything that I'm missing <clears throat> and she said, no, we're just getting a few other bids from contractors. And I said, okay, appreciate that. And uh, I told her, would you like to come out to one of our job sites that we're doing that's very similar to yours? You can bring your husband, and you guys can walk it and check it out. And she said, really? I said, absolutely. She said, yeah, that'd be awesome. And I said, okay, come on over. And I sent her an address to a very, very expensive, it was a quarter million dollar job, and we built the bocce ball court. You guys probably don't know about it unless you follow me on Instagram, at tgringertz, obviously right here. And uh, you can see that we did a bocce ball court with huge grass area. It was beautiful. Like this, this was probably a $10 million house. And this is the one where I craned the tree into the backyard from the church parking lot. It was nuts. And I invited them out there and she brought her husband and then she brought her, her kids too. And then they had like a little field trip. And then they walked the site and they were very impressed at how we did all the work. And uh, I think that's what really wrapped up the deal by them coming to see a job. So if you're ever at a, at a point where you and the customer are at a standstill and you don't really know what to do, invite them out to one of your current jobs. That's the best way to do it. Then you can walk it, show them the site, and the best is when the homeowner of that site is there and then they can talk to the customer that you want to close. That is an easy, easy, easy sale, easy close. That's pretty much a 99% guarantee slam dunk. Unless another guy comes in at, you know, $30,000 less. But it's funny, every time I, I do a bid, let's say I send a bid for $140,000 and then the guy comes in at $110,000, I'm like... I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, there is something this guy is not including in here. There's no way that our bids are apples to apples. There's no way. Because this job took forever. I think this one took like 28 days to do. Nah, maybe not 28, maybe like 22. But look at all the work, okay? Look at all the labor we have going on here. So many moving parts. The pavers, right? The grass, the artificial turf, the putting green the the lighting the irrigation planting another thing i didn't like is the design of provided plants i kind of didn't like that either i always like to do plants that are purchased by me and installed by me because all the plants come on my schedule and that was the only difference is the designer provided 
his plants on his schedule so some plants were here some plants were not but i don't know that's that's another topic for it so another day but um <clears throat> so after that i would say maybe maybe a week or two later maybe eight days later the customer i reached out to the customer again i said hey aline uh, how are we looking on this project can we make a deal and she said yeah i think we're ready to move forward and i said great uh, send over any notes that you have where I can change in the contract and then she sent some notes over and uh, <clears throat> I made all the adjustments that she was looking for like maybe we took out some stuff or added some stuff and then I signed it sent it to her she signed it sent it to me and then boom we booked her for I think two months from that date when signing and uh, the job went great and this was also the time where I got the ditch witch. See the 3000? This was the job where the ditch witch rolled up to. And it was pretty good. But boys, if you're watching this video and you're like, man, dude, I need to figure out how to close some of these deals. Like it's easier than you think. You just need, you just need a little bit of a track record and you need to know how to do things. And you need to know how to communicate with customers. The only reason that you're not closing deals like this is because your communication is off. And your communication is, sorry to say, incorrect. Because if you spoke to people the right way, and if you presented yourself and your company the right way, people will close, you know? People want to be assured that the job will go according to plan. And um, that's what's really important for customers, especially when, you know, 140 bands is a lot of money. Like, that's $140,000. You can buy like three, four houses with that amount of money in freaking Ohio, you know, Indiana. But here in San Jose, I mean, this house that you're looking at right now, it doesn't even look like a very fancy house, but it's worth like $3 million, which is crazy to think about. But $3 million in Illinois, you would have a mansion or $3 million in Texas. You would have literally a fortress. Like it, it'll be insane. But in San Jose, that's not the case. This house is actually very nice, probably very roomy, very spacious, and it is a two and a half, three million dollar house. Dropped, you know, five percent of the home's value on landscaping. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now it's like someone in Ohio, they have a fifty thousand dollar house, and they drop, you know, twenty five hundred bucks on landscaping. That's nothing. <clears throat> it's all based on the percentage, but as you see, the boys are like little ants. They're moving fast, 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 fast. And on this particular job, I had, usually Applewood doesn't work overtime, but we had about three weeks of rain coming, and I told Jose, I'm like, dude, we need to vamanos, because if we don't have the grass down, if we don't have everything graded and all the equipment out of there, it is going to be an absolute nightmare of a job because virgin soil like this you see right here in the grass as soon as it hits a little bit of rain you have incredibly difficult to work with mud but as soon as it hits a lot of rain then you my friend are screwed so what i did is i told jose and all the boys i'm like hey on saturday because on sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday like literally for three weeks i'm not exaggerating three weeks it was gonna rain so i told them i told jose and a bunch of the guys i said guys we need to work saturday it is not a time where i like to pay things but it was gonna be overtime for everyone and overtime is time and a half and that was a very expensive day so let's say normally it's three thousand dollars in labor uh, that was a $4,500 day. So, not a good offer, right? Cut into the profit of the job, but I knew I would be spending probably another four grand if we didn't do that and get everything out of there. So, what we did, this is, this is it right here. This is Saturday. As you see, the rain is already coming, but it wasn't scheduled to rain then. No, this is not Saturday. My bad. What am I talking about? Saturday, I think this is two days before but you can see everything's moist and wet and uh pain in the butt boom so yeah we see everything everything's rolling um 
Hey, I got to tell you guys something, okay? Real, real talk, heart to heart. I know there's a bunch of young guys watching. I know there's a bunch of people that are just in the beginning of their company or there's a bunch of people that have been doing landscaping for longer than I have, but you're stuck at a certain point. Like, you can't break a million in sales. You can't break two million, three million. And you just need help, okay? The best way to do something is to watch what other people are doing. If you see me doing jobs like this and you're like, why can't I do it? It's simply because you don't know something. That's the only reason. You don't know something or you're too cheap or you're just too scared. You don't take the risk. You don't throw down. You don't do anything. You just sit by while everyone else gets money. Example, okay? There is no shortage of money in this planet. And I'll prove it to you right now. If you were to take $10 billion out of the world economy and put it in your bank account, not a single person would know this, that $10 billion was in your bank account. You get what I'm saying? There's an infinite supply of money and it's just flowing everywhere. And all you have to do is find a way to collect it. That's it. So if you're not collecting it, there's something you don't know. And that's what we are here to help you with. If you wanna figure that out, reach out to me, DM me. But I said this last time and so many of you reached out to me, okay? There was probably like, Coaster, how many DMs we have? Maybe like 50, 60, 100, I have no idea. There was a ton. And you guys asked me for advice and I gave you advice, but you never pulled the trigger on it. You said, oh, example. You're like, oh, T, I'm uh, 19 years old and I'm, and I'm doing lawn cutting, but I don't really know how to get hardscape jobs. And I said, okay, well, first you have to start marketing for hardscape jobs. Are you going around telling people that you're, that you're a hardscaper now? And they said, no. I'm like, okay. Do you, have a, do you have anyone in your area where you're learning from that is doing bigger jobs? Uh, no, I mean, it's, there's bigger companies in my area, but I don't really know any of them. Have you approached any of them? No. And the truth is, most people, okay, I learned this a long time ago, and Grant taught me this. Most people won't help you because they are too busy. And why would they help a little 16-year-old kid or a 19-year-old kid when they're running a company doing big things, they just don't have time. But that's what we're here for. That's what the Go Gang is here for. We will help you, we wanna help you because the more successful people we have around us, the more successful we'll become. And that, boys, is how the cookie crumbles. Thanks for watching, reach out to me. And we're finished. I'm just gonna take you on a quick Much little better. walk. It's pretty nice, it came out really good. First is the bocce ball court. This was a, uh, Bocce ball core with oyster shells, but it's too annoying to clean. So we did this. We put a putting green in here. It looks quite nice. And then we uh, we did pavers all around. We did a little fence. A painter is gonna come in here. He's gonna paint the fence white. You might be like, T, what's up with this wire? The homeowner is testing. She doesn't know if she wants it there. So we'll see. We did pavers here. All of their control boxes, timer, um, lights, that's good. We have some very nice plants, very nice plants. Now let's go over here. We got some lights. I, you know one thing about lights is I always wonder what it looks like at night. I gotta start making a comeback to see what it looks like. Allen block retaining wall. This was charged correctly. I did good with charging with this. I did not good charging with this. This took a lot longer than anticipated and I did not know. Now I do. Mental note, anytime there's some kind of, I should have just charged, honestly, this should have just been a double. It shouldn't even been a 1.5. It should have just been like, whatever you charge for that one, charge double for this one. But as you know, we learn, we move on, it's okay. We did uh, electrical, electrician did all this, but we ran uh, 110 volt to the hot tub. That's gonna be a hot tub area right here. We did, uh, no, there's 220 volt, my bad. We ran 220 there, 110 here, 110 there, 110 there, and then there's another one there. Um, 
grass area. Looks very nice. Looking pretty good. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You see that wall right there? So that wall is for um, soccer. The kids like to play soccer. This is a goal. So what they do, once the grass grows and takes in and becomes hard, they're gonna bounce the ball off that wall, like a little, and it's gonna come back, and they're gonna score the goal. We put plants here. This job's pretty simple, but you know, it was not as nice looking when we got here, but it looks very nice right now. Uh, there's a few more things to do, like we gotta wash the driveway. We don't have the pressure washer here today. It's in the other trailer and uh, do a bunch of other stuff. Little knickknacks, little sorting things out. Probably have two more two more hours here. And that's it, we're out of here. What'd you think? Leave in the comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, it's okay. Uh, this is more utility yard, it's not super fancy. And it's very usable though, very flat.